Hey, welcome to my workshop. Today we have a sweet knife here that we're doing a little restoration on a beautiful little story. It's going to be a light restoration. It's not going to be this huge transformation, but it's the knife that uh, that we're working on that's uh, that's special. And this is a pre-production. Everyone will recognize as soon as I pull this out of the sheath. Everyone will recognize this knife here. So this knife looks like your standard D. H. Russell, your Groman belt knife, Canadian made knife. And while it is that, it's not all so standard because this is a pre-production model sent in by a client who scored it as part of their collection and it is sweet. Guess how old this thing is? This thing was bought new in the 60s and there's a little stamp right here, 1958. So I'm thinking that's when this thing was made. And again, pre-production. So before this knife was popularized and publicly or readily available all over the world to buy online as you can now, this is pre-production. How cool is that? And it is in great shape, especially for the year, considering this thing is a uh, little over 60 years old. How cool is that? Beautiful patina, but we do have a little bit of rusting, particularly up here close to the handle. A little bit of rusting out around here, light surface rust. Same thing, same areas on this side, common right up here near where the scales end. We have a chipped tip here. Can you see that? The tip has been broken off, so we have, uh, notice these two planes here don't actually come to a point. So we'll have to taper that in proper. Needs a new edge. Then the handle, perhaps the worst of the uh, uh, the aesthetics on this knife. See, we have some heavy rusting right here. Doesn't look like it's tearing apart the handle yet though. So we want to take care of that before we get in there. The whole tang is just a little rough. We've got some rusting down here. So we'll take care of all that for the client. Oxidation, a little oxidation on the pins here. We want to strip that off, refinish the handle, give it a buff. So this thing looks as pristine as it did when it rolled off that pre-production line. How cool is that? What a cool story. Step one, a fine or a soft wire wheel here on a belt grinder and I'll just get right in here like this right up next to the handle I'll, I'll rough over the blade so we can strip off some of the some of the surface rust there we'll also get in there and clean out that jimping so it's clean clean up the rest of the tang but I won't come back here on the handle I don't want this wire to touch the wood because it will put claw marks in the wood we'll take care of that in a different way Beautiful, look how we cleaned off, just scraped off some of that surface gunk and rust there. Everything is nice and clean. Now I'm going to take it over to my belt grinder and we'll concentrate on this tang here. Again, look at that rusting, heavy rusting right there, but around there as well, multiple other parts, some pitting along here. I want to take care of that, and how I'm going to do that you'll notice the red on this wheel here this is a contact wheel and it's a silicone wheel so it's like a soft rubber it doesn't have the harshness when a belt runs over it and that is my preferred way we'll take this tang in see I just scratched that there look at that we'll just strip that off right up tight to that jimping here I'll go right up to right here at this point on the inside and we'll have a beautifully finished tang.
Just a quick pit stop. So this is common right here with natural wood handles like this. You can see that by, by reaching the tang that I've actually dug into a little bit of the wood. And that's because that wood has sw swollen out slightly, protruded slightly ahead of the tang. That's going to happen. We'll blend that in with a little sandpaper. Buff it. It'll be beautiful. But that's our start. 120 grit finish right there. So that's a 120 grit belt there now. You can see it's got some harshness. It's not like a real smooth finish on that tang. You can see the striations in there. Again, you can see where I had to strip down that tang, touched into the wood. We'll blend that in nicely in a minute. But now we'll go to a 220 grit belt, partly worn, much finer finish. Two hundred and twenty grit finish. Now we're under a really harsh LED light. That's actually a pretty nice finish to the eye, but still some good, good scratching in there. Now we'll go to a worn four hundred grit. That'll give the finish that I want for this tang. Now that's a nice finish we're left with there. That's like I said a worn 400. That's right off the belt. Looks really really good. Now as we saw those pins are pretty tarnished. Quite a bit of oxidation there. Even a little like green oxidation which is odd. I'm not sure what's in there. Maybe zinc. Maybe we're getting a uh, Almost something like that. I'm going to use a, a scallop belt just so I don't get any cut edges. And a scallop belt tends to draw in on the sides. Being the, the, the less tension portion kind of relaxes in so you, your belt crowns and allows you to address an edge like that without getting that belt cut edge there. Now that I'm done with that belt, I'll go ahead and start with a little sandpaper and just start blending in all those little facets that I've created. Because I didn't fully strip this handle. Not fully refinishing it. Leaving it, trying to leave it as original as possible. But just get rid of some of the nastiness that you don't want there that, that's developed over the years. Don't mind the little dents and nicks and chips in the wood and things like that. Clients are concerned about that. But things like oxidation and stuff that will cause for further deterioration over time. We want those things gone because those things don't add to the value of the knife. They detract from it. So we'll put a nice new finish on it. Again, leaving some of the character that's developed over the years. Now let's get a buffing on there. Look at that handle, look at that handle. Again, I didn't carve off all the, the character. You can still see it in any areas that I didn't have to touch. Left it all in there, that wasn't the goal. The goal was to remove the oxidation which further causes the knife to break down. So we stripped off all the surface rust on that tank. 
which left some facets that I had to blend into the rest of the handle. We also stripped the face off of these pins because again they had some heavy like white metal oxidation and now isn't that looking great now when you have a knife with a broken tip like this this is repeated three times we have this piece broken off the tip of our knife there are a couple ways we can address this you can do this take it away from the spine you can do this and add a little more upward rotation to that belly or you could kind of pick a center point and split the difference depending on the style of knife you have you know one might be better than the other in most cases you're better off splitting the difference especially if it's a small amount then you won't change the lines you won't change the geometry you will end up with something that looks the same but with a brand new tip now in this case with this knife there's a very small amount taken off we'll check our edge here we're quite dull along here what I'm going to end up doing, and so I don't have to strip off all of this part of the tank, I'd like to keep that original just because the, the blade face, we didn't strip anything off of it. So I have that patina, so I want to keep the patina here, and it's just the polishing on the handle starting after the jimping. So, so I don't have to disrupt that and put a, a mirror polish on here. What I'm going to do is take it up from the edge so we'll bring the edge up to meet that corner there we'll taper that back through here a little bit just to blend it in we don't want to have a sharp transition kind of like a bull nose there we'll bring that back down through here a little bit now this is the part you don't want to mess up see how I'm blending that back there That was a 120 grit belt. Now we're going to a 1220. Onto a 400 grit belt. And now just finishing up the sharpening process on a leather paddle strop here. My favorite, never finish sharpening without stropping on a leather paddle strop. Strops available on my website, colonelsley.com. Very, very nice quality leather paddle strops. You can run and grab yourself one right now. But, you know, some of you might be wondering why I didn't put a whetstone polished edge on this particular knife. Wasn't what the client asked for. I asked for a good working edge. Oh man, that. Ooh. Can your edges do that? Can you get that? So I'm very happy with that result. I'm sure the client will be absolutely thrilled. And that is it for this light duty restoration on this piece of history. What a classic piece of Canadian steel, Canadian history. Awesome. Thanks for watching. Hit that like button. Get over to kylenolsley.com. Get yourself a leather strap. And if you need a custom knife built, if you want a production knife of mine, 
you're in need of my sharpening services or my repair or restoration services, you can go ahead and check out my website. You can email me. Lots of different ways. But thanks for watching. Hit that like button. Subscribe if it's your first time here. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.